Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Alice Bradley is the deputy editor of Lifehacker and co-host of Lifehacker's podcast, The Upgrade. Alice is also co-author of the book, Let's Panic About Babies. And her stories and essays have been featured in numerous magazines and anthologies. Hi, Alice. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. Great to be here. Yeah, it's really great to have you, Alice. We've been looking forward to this for a while. Oh, I've been looking forward to it as well. So cool. Yeah, we're, we're huge fans of Lifehacker. I read it every day. I love it. I can't believe that you can find so much great content every day, but um, it's uh, one of my first stops every morning is to go to the Lifehacker um, site. So it's a thrill to have great. you. We can't believe it also sometimes, but we, <laughs> we managed to pull it out of the hat. It's cool. Yeah. And I think Lifehacker, I mean, it's one of the old school sites that's still around. I, I love, I love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 We're still going strong. Cool. So you have a few tools to talk to us about this time. And, uh, Let's just jump right into them and tell us about yak tracks. So here's the thing. I am um, I'm a clumsy person. I'm an uncoordinated person. <laughs> and when the, the weather turns, which it does, because I'm in New York, and the ice and snow start coming down, I... Like, I'm a slippy, I'm a slippery person, a person who falls a lot. And I end up getting so afraid that I'm going to fall that I'm shuffling around like an old woman, um, which is irritating and uh, time consuming. So I've discovered these things called yak tracks, which are basically uh, cleats for your shoes. You can just clip them onto your shoe, kind of actually, they kind of stretch over your shoe and they keep you from falling. And they are magic. They're basically like, they're not even like cleats, they're like little wire loops. And Somehow they grip onto the ice and the snow, and I have not found a, an icy path that, that I could not cross with these things on. And, and the really cool thing is, is is that they go over whatever shoes you have on, so you're not yeah. like switching shoes off. You just and, and they probably uh, store in a very small amount of space. Totally, they stretch out, and you can you don't have to wear you don't have to commit to like you know shoes with cleats like a weirdo. Um, you can sort of subtly put them over your shoe when you're heading out the door, and take them off when you come back in. And they're 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 great. They have literally saved my ass. Yeah, really cool, and they're not that expensive either. It's like seventeen dollars maybe. And I think there are a different couple of different kinds, but I've seen the other ones and they seem a little more high commitment and serious. These don't look as like you're, you know, braving the tundra as the other ones I've seen. So I kind of like them. Yeah, really cool. And um, I think they come in different sizes, like, you know, big, little, small. Um, oh, definitely. Right. Um, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Being in, in here in LA, I don't really have much interest in them, but. I'm sure we have lots of people, uh, especially right now, in uh, with this cold freeze that's happening, that would really appreciate these. And the day might come when you're visiting New York City. And it's, <laughs> like, there's, the worst is when it's like there's been a snowfall and it's iced over, and then it's thawed enough, so there's like a like a wet slick over the ice, so you can't see it, and you think you're walking on normal normal pavement and suddenly you're, you're down All right i would totally yeah and then i would be begging for these and they're they're <laughs> something that are like they're they look like they're really lightweight and they would fold up into like a little tiny like ziploc bag into your suitcase so no excuse not totally. to have them yeah. you can roll them up i'm telling you you got to get them yeah yeah you know if you yeah if you're anywhere where there's ice and snow these are probably essential yeah yep. that is cool but I will say that when you're indoors and you're wearing them, it's like having roller skates on. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're going in and out running errands, that's that can be tricky. Yeah, right, right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yak tracks. Very cool. So uh, the other one is as a streaming music service that you uh, actually pay for and and like. Tell us about it. Yeah. So it's Brain.fm, which gives you different beats depending on whether you want to focus, relax, or sleep. And I've only used it for focusing. I use it at mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And it is like Adderall for your ears. I don't know what wow. it does. It, I, I can focus so well when I'm listening to this stuff that it's almost, it's, it's almost 
too good. <laughs> like I focused on <laughs> that I like everything else drops away and I'm just in whenever I'm in the editing zone, I can just turn it on and it's and you go. And it's great. And how would you describe the music or the sound to somebody? Uh, is it like techno? Is it symphonic? Is it like music, like a music soundtrack? Right. They've actually got different options. So there is like a, there is a soundtrack one. There is a classical one. There's forest beats. There's ocean. Um, the one I listen to is more like electronica. Um, so it's very much like. You're in the club, but it's very, very late, and every, it's, everyone's winding down. Um, the chill, that's, the chill. That's my so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, is it is it most of it like without lyrics? Is it mostly kind of? Oh, totally without lyrics. Okay. If there were lyrics, there's no way. Right, I could right, to right. I can't. I, if there's a word going on. I'm no. I have to. Right. I, I would. I would not be able to do it. But it's 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 actually oh, what's, what's the word I want? It's like pre-existing music or music that may, you may even recognize, or is it all kind of like just? Or is it like Muzak, which is kind of just generated for this for these channels? It's well, think Muzak, but not at all offensive. It's not. I think <laughs> it's generated for the channels, as far as I can tell, and it's not no tunes you would recognize. It really is like generic, and it sounds like it would be boring, but it just it just kind of kind of recedes to the background while you're working. And uh, yeah, I just I love it. Well, it's actually music <laughs> that works because that actually was the original intention of music. Music was first invented to increase productivity in offices and, and factories. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There you so go. so it's, yeah. it's music that works. I'm, I'm probably, it's probably by the same company. And I'm fine. <laughs> well, no, this was like, this was in like the fifties or something. Uh, Alice, do you find this useful? Like, is it better to use these with headphones or can you just like have it playing out of your laptop? I mean, I use it with headphones. You're supposed to use it with headphones. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if it's like binaural or one of those. I don't know if it's, that's, if there's any kind of science behind it or it's just a matter of not annoying your your office mates but you know i'm a i'm a good person so i keep it for myself and <laughs> um in your kind of exploring these as tools did you look at like you know whether spotify or pandora have channels that would come close to this or i probably would have been smart before i <laughs> <laughs> uh no i haven't i did i did find actually um a friend recommended on YouTube, there's a live stream called like lo-fi hip hop beats. And I thought that was okay too, but it was a little more distracting than, than I found this one to be. Um, and I used to listen to something called like, I think it was called coffee shop. I remember that. It just had literally coffee shop noises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could mix in like the sounds of rain outside. Well, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of sites that have a very complicated, yeah, the, the, the ambient, sound selection tin rain on a tin roof and stuff like that yeah yeah um ha have you have you ever tried playing one track over and over again in a loop you mean on brain brain no, no just 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 like from from wherever you have if, if you have they're on your computer or your phone you can play it uh some people find like this is what I do. I find this uh, focuses me is just to play a, a kind of a song without lyrics on a loop, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. does the same kind of thing. It becomes kind of trance like, and it kind of disappears while at the same time helping me focus. I would worry that I'm going to be like I'm in the sick thirty sixth you know round of this, and I can tell I'm reaching that part of the song again. I feel like I would start to notice the repetitiveness, but you don't. No, no, it it's. It's kind of weird. It it um it become it's like chanting, I guess. It's like what happens mm -hmm. when you're chanting. The fact that you're repeating it is an asset rather than something that's a problem. Interesting. Hmm. So um, there are a number of people who find that that looping really does work, and it, it does work for me. You may just try it. All right, save me some money. Cool. And and oh, I should just mention though with the Brain FM that you can do five free sessions. So try before you buy. Yeah, definitely try it out. And the sessions are long too. I think they're two hours each. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good, it's a good amount of time. Cool. And do you ever use it to like help to fall asleep? I don't, I really use it just for work. Okay. You, you can use it for, for falling asleep. Um, and so it's $50 a year. Um, mm -hmm. 
for if you if you do go if you've tried out as Mark suggested and you find it works for you. Yeah, that's definitely worth it if you can help you focus. For sure. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it out. And and so, um, Alice, did you feel like you kind of uh, are easily distracted or something? Is that the main reason you're doing it? Yeah, I'm very easily distracted. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm scattered. Yeah. And a lot of it is hard to kind of, you know, avoid because it's like Slack and email, things pop up while you're working. It's not so much like, you know, I'm wandering away as much as uh, there's other things going on. But if you can turn that stuff off and really focus on something, it's, uh, I find that this, this really, really does the trick. Cool. That okay. That's great. Well, well, cool. Thank you. That, that, that's a good one. And I, I'm really looking forward to trying it out as someone who is really easily distracted. So, Mark, we have another uh, item here since you're distracted. Yeah. <laughs> the third one. <laughs> um, tell, us, tell us about your third choice. Oh, okay. So the Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator is um, a Chrome extension that was shared with me by my friend and boss, Melissa, who I know you been speaking to also. Um, so no, Newsfeed Eradicator is literally is what it says. It, it eradicates the newsfeed from Facebook. So I have to go to Facebook all the time for work. And what would happen, what used to happen is that I would go to Facebook to check on the Lifehacker channel or to check on our um, Offspring, which is our parenting page, our, the Offspring group. And I would go on there and immediately get distracted by my newsfeed, right? What's going on with my friends? What funny cat video did somebody link to what whatever it was i was lost and i would forget that i was going there for work so melissa shared this with me and it's brilliant it just takes the newsfeed away and instead you get an inspiring quote it's Ooh. always something different it's henry david thoreau or Winston churchill and sometimes they're a little sometimes they feel a little preachy it's a lot of like you know life is too short you know, grab life by the reins. Like don't <laughs> look Facebook. Um, but it does the trick. I go on Facebook. I go right to what I'm trying to do for work, and I, I get off of it. I don't use it at home because at home I don't care as much. But at work, it's great. And so you can uh, okay. So th this is a browser. So you're coming through your laptop version for this, and you can still see other stuff in Facebook. You just don't see your news feed. You just don't see the news feed. Okay. You can see everything. You can and you can check people's feeds if you're really committed to being distracted. Mm -hmm. But um, but if, when you go onto the page, you just see a quote. You don't see your newsfeed anymore. I see. And could you put it on your phone if you wanted to? Is there a phone version? It's a Chrome extension, so I don't I think, think so. so. I right, right. Yeah. This reminds me a little of something somebody created so that when you click on the Twitter icon on your smartphone, it opens up your Kindle app. <laughs> yeah, I need tricks like that. Yeah, I do. Well, the problem was if you clicked on your Kindle app, it opened up the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you <old> swapperoo. <laughs> yeah, I've already deleted Facebook off of my phone just because I could. I just can't. It just yeah. it's way too distracting for me. I don't have. I don't have any social on my phone. Really um, smart. So really okay, smart. so the news feed eradicator Chrome extension. Cool. All right. And so, yeah, so you're saying uh, use it at work where productivity matters, but at home when you are maybe uh, more relaxed and not as efficient, then that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Although I find the less I'm on Facebook, the less I want to be on Facebook. Yeah. In a way, it's helping me out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your fourth one, which was um, a water bottle. So what's the name of the water bottle? It's a so Soden bottle by Hay. It is very fancy. So, <laughs> so the Soden bottle by Hay was a Christmas gift from my friend Melissa. And it is the prettiest water bottle I've ever owned. And it's very fancy. It's um, stainless steel. And it comes in different colors. So it's sort of these like brightly colored bottles that are they feel kind of architectural. They're just beautifully designed. Oh yeah. I just saw these on yeah. Sunday at a place in, on yeah. Abbot Kinney in, in Venice. Okay. It's a Scandinavian design place. Yeah. It's a very Scandinavian kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I thought they were beautiful. They're really cool. They sort of, for people in our audio listening audience, they look like, um, uh, statues are kind of slightly tapered. They're, they're not straight sided. They're tapered with a, pedestal kind of at the top a kind of i don't know like a bird bath or something 
mm-hmm. um, and 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 they're kind of pastel kind of colors, mm-hmm. and they're not a single color either. They're mixed and matched, so they they have a kind of they look like art sculptures. Right, and the cap is a slightly different color than the rest of it, so it's just it's just kind of perfect and. You know, when I first got it, I'm like, this is this is nice. And I ended up really just, I feel like water tastes better in it, which is probably um, an illusion. But also, the, I just think stainless steel is just better in general. Just the water tastes better than, I used to have a plastic bottle. And this gets gross. Yeah. And this gets gross. It's, it's the same effect of when people get, get their car washed, they feel that their car is running better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this is the, does it, Spark you with joy when you touch it. Yes. It, yeah. It does. And it keeps things cold, unlike a water a plastic water bottle. And uh it feels like and it's not gonna, you know, degrade and I'm not gonna have to throw it out. So that feels feels I feel like a good person. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh do you know how much they cost? It was a gift, so you you might not know. I mean, you know, it's crass to look it up after I got it as a gift. <laughs> That's uh, true. We we won't tell. I, I'm not going to look. We'll just put it in the show notes. Okay, okay. I won't look at the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about what you are working on these days and um, say your podcast, The Upgrade. Yeah. So right now I'm the deputy editor over at Lifehacker and I'm co-host of our podcast, The Upgrade with Melissa Kirsch. The subject of The Upgrade is... Uh, is it a weekly? It's a weekly upgrade. So the upgrade is a weekly podcast and it's all about tips and tricks and hacks to make your life better. So it's everything from how to improve your public speaking, how to be less anxious, how to not give a shit, um, how to, how to read minds is one we've got coming up. So stay tuned for that one. Um, really everything and anything. So it's the same domain as life hacker itself. Then you, you, it's, it's the uh, exactly. general thing of improving your life. Um, exactly. The, um, the people that you're interviewing, are they kind of like experts or are they more people who have um, some notoriety or who, who, who are, who are your um, subjects? Yeah, it really runs the gamut. I mean, typically we have experts on every now and then we'll get on somebody who's just really fun and interesting and might have had personal experience with the topic. Um, we just had this, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, actually. Um, we just had on a Swedish mentalist named Henrik Fexius about how to read minds. He wrote a book called The Art of Reading Minds. Um We've had on uh, Alan Alda about how to be, uh, how to tell better stories. Um, we've really had a, a wide range, and then we had a live show where we had comedians on. Chris Gethard and um, uh, Akila Hughes was on as well, just to sort of talk about how to how to fail. Well, <laughs> so well, kind of, that's really a great kind of one. Yeah, it. no, people need to learn. It's like how to fall. You want to, you want to know how to fall. You gotta know <laughs> exactly your role. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, Life Hacker itself has been around a long time. It's one of the kind of classic um, internet standbys in many ways. Um, have do you have tips on for people how to use Life Hacker itself? Because you have so much material, and I'm just wondering if um, if you have mm-hmm. kind of power users or over decades of of use, whether mm-hmm. um, what advice you would give to people about how to use Life Hacker. I mean, you know, I would, of course, say just visit every morning and let it wash over you. <laughs> see any better way to do it. I just, you know, stay there constantly refreshing the page. Um, you know, our, 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 our content is such a wide, wide, wide range. We've got people, we've got everything from people who come for the cooking uh, information to the uh, people who come for tech to people who come for financial stuff. Um, I don't know that, I don't know that I would, uh, hmm. That's a good question. I mean, do, you, do, you, do you have kind of like a digest version? Do you have the best of? Do you have, yeah. have you made any, you know, other mm-hmm. other ways in which people can kind of like just focus on a certain subject and not see the rest? Well, um, I would say subscribe to the newsletter because that would give you the best. Okay. The best of every day. So t- tell us about the newsletter. What, what, what's, what does that entail? The newsletter is just a digest of the top stories of the day. So when, you know, you'll get it's that. A daily, it's a daily newsletter? Yeah. Okay. Alice, you wrote a book called Let's Panic About Babies, which is uh, a, a guide to being a, a parent, I, I, I guess. <laughs> so Let's Panic About Babies 
is um, it is not a guide. It is a humor book about parenting and baby making, and it is entirely fake. It is full of fake information. Um, it is meant to be uh, simply just uh, you know humor for expecting parents who are freaking out. Um, when, I was, uh-huh. <laughs> when I was pregnant and I was looking at all these pregnancy books and parenting books, I couldn't believe how sort of directive the information was, how, how, how prescriptive it was, how, how they would say like, as if they knew exactly what your baby would be like, they would tell you exactly what to do and exactly what to think and exactly what to feel. Not kind of acknowledging at all that this is an incredibly personal experience and that, you know, how the, the best way to get your baby to sleep is going to depend widely on what kind of baby you have, right? Or how mm-hmm. to feed them or, you know, all of these things I thought I knew. I thought if I read enough books, basically, I would be an expert. So when the baby came, I would know exactly what to do. And I had a baby and that did not did not work out so well for me. <laughs> it turned out I had a very particular kind of baby who had very particular needs. And, you know, for instance, he wouldn't fall asleep with me in the room. He wanted, he would just, he, I, he had to cry it out. And I was so committed to that not happening that it was devastating for me to have to leave him alone in a room until I realized that was the only way he was ever going to get to sleep because he was an incredibly social person, even from that age. And he would, you know, if I was in the room, it was party time as far as he was concerned. So <laughs> that uh, frustrated me so much. And I ended up writing this book with my co-writer, Eden Marriott Kennedy, um, really making fun of those books. So we had, um, so we had me kind of coming in as the kind of really prescriptive, uh, fake doctor being like, you know, um, you must let your baby cry it out at 15 minute intervals. And then she would be sort of the Dr. Sears type. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the different camps, but there's like, yeah, sure. Sure. Like we we read all those books too, what to expect when you're expecting and right, right, right. So she would be sort of, so she was sort of the kind of corrective to my, uh, that to that sort of prescriptive outlook and she'd be more the kind of like you know you have to attachment parent and let them nurse until they're 15 and just <laughs> you know, we read the book together and we uh uh-huh. we had a lot of fun it sounds great um especially because like the first time you have a kid mm-hmm. and it's it's a uh, kind of scary and nerve-wracking and having that kind of humor mm-hmm. really helps to realize that other people are like having a lot of uh, like stress about it and confusion and mm-hmm. stuff. So like, let's panic about babies. Is like right. a great title <laughs> for <laughs> how panic everybody panic feels. Thing to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and babies really are adorable tyrants. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're monsters. They're little monsters, and we let them in yeah. homes, and then they grow up. And you know, now I have a seventeen year old, and. Uh, it's not any better. I could probably. It's not any better. easier. It's not, no, it's not easier. It's just he's just much bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Much yeah, less likely to cuddle with it. <laughs> exactly. Well, Alice, this has been a blast talking to you. You're oh, you're you. uh, you're really funny. I, I think. Uh, ha- have you done stand up before? I, I have not done stand up. Oh, it seems like you should. Oh, I, okay. I really think well, you should. Well, maybe that'll be my next. You're very cool. funny. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Alice, thanks a lot. This was a blast. And um, did, I wasn't aware that, that Life Hacker had a podcast. So I'm excited that I have a, a podcast to listen to, especially oh. if Melissa and, and you are doing it. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Have a listen and you know maybe we'll have you on. Yeah, that's good. Great. Well, We'd thank love you it. so much. Thank you for being on our podcast. And we uh, really appreciate your tool tips. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, it's Mark from the Cool Tools Podcast. I want to thank you for being a listener to Cool Tools. And I also would like to let you know about our Patreon page. If you would like to support the Cool Tools show, as well as our video channel, the website, and all the newsletters that we do, you can go to patreon.com slash cool tools. That's just one word, cool tools. And pledge any amount you want. You could even pledge a dollar a month. Every little bit helps. We have editors, we pay for transcribing costs, we pay our reviewers. Every bit of money that you contribute goes towards supporting the show. I'd like to give a shout out to our supporters of the Cool Tools podcast. This week, I'd like to thank the following Patreon supporters. Bill Schuler, Bob K, Ryan Pelly, Carl D. Patterson, Chad Cosby, Chris Wieland, Chris Weirstook, Craig Tooker, 
Dan O'Brien, Dean Putney, Danelle Cunningham, Evan Barker, Graham Medlin, Hans Riesbeck, Helen Hegedus, Jerry Kearns, Jim Lesko, Jim Spofford, John Pollock, John Burdenbaugh, Keith O, Ken Altman, Les Howard, Lauren Bast, Mock Nerd, Malton Make, Mark Goebel, Matt Gromes, Michael Douglas, Michael Jones, and Michael Pecorini. Thanks to all of you for supporting the Cool Tools Show. We really appreciate it. <music>